guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm doing something a little bit different today, but I think it'll be enjoyable nonetheless. Um, I'm currently sitting on my lounge on the floor by our bookshelf because I wanted to talk to you about Harry Potter. This is actually my book from home. The covers look really different in the States than they do in the UK and I brought mine with me because they're so special to me and I love the artwork. Um, but I'm a little bit of a Harry Potter nerd. I've always been a big fan. I've loved, I loved the books, loved the films for the most part. Um, <laughs> but I thought it would be quite fun given kind of all of the Harry Potter stuff that's happening at the moment um, to do a bit of like a London tour. So a few weeks ago, uh, my friend Shayna and I basically did like a London walking tour of all things Harry Potter. We had so much fun. We were playing Harry Potter Trivial Pursuit. Uh, we were asking each other questions about the books and stuff, and it was really, really fun. Um, unfortunately, my camera uh, picked up a lot of the background noise, so you can't really hear most of what we were saying. So I've kind of decided to do something slightly different, but I still wanted to show you everything that we did while we were doing our um, Harry Potter walking tour. So. It's gonna be a bit of a different one, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And if you are a fan like me, well, here's hoping you enjoy it. <laughs> We're such nerds. Not exactly the doodle do we? Nerds indeed. A day traipsing through London, and our first stop, quite naturally, was King's Cross platform nine and three quarters. If you're gonna do a Harry Potter tour, where else would you start? This is where the magic happens. Now, if you've read the books and seen the films, platform nine and three quarters needs little explanation. It's where the Hogwarts Express leaves from every year on the 1st of September. Rumor has it that JK Rowling used King's Cross because her parents met at the station. How cute. On our way out of the station, we stopped to admire St. Pancras International, which was used in the films as the exterior of King's Cross, because, let's face it, it's gorgeous. My favorite character, I think, was probably always Ron. I, of the three of them, I guess everyone's supposed to say Harry Potter, but of the three of them, I feel like he kind of, he was so three-dimensional and just, there were little elements of him that I always found uh, really interesting. Like his, you know, he made mistakes, but he wasn't afraid to apologize and kind of admit that he was wrong and come back and say, actually, no, do you know what? Like I've made a mistake. Um, he was really loyal as well. Incredibly funny. So, so funny. Um, much funnier in the books than he was in the film. He had a lot of strength, he had a lot of weaknesses, and um, it, I just, I don't know, I always found myself really like drawn to him. I liked Harry, I thought he was great, I liked Hermione, I thought she was really cool too, but I think of the three of them, Ron was always my favorite. Gosh, there's so many characters I love, but I think definitely my favorite is Ron. And we are back. Our next stop on the tour was a bit of an indulgence, but we just couldn't help it. London Zoo. This was actually my first time at the zoo, just like Harry, and we had a lot of fun wandering through. We didn't indulge in any knickerbocker glories, but we did stop by the reptile house to see if any Brazilian boa constrictors were looking for a chat. We actually ended up spending about three hours at the zoo. Perhaps a little longer than planned, but worth it all the same.
What's my favorite moment from the books? I think the books have so many wonderful things happening in them, but I think the moment that always stuck with me was from the first book. It's when they are um, going down the trap door and they kind of have all of these different tests and stuff and it's sort of a moment where uh, I think they're trapped in the devil's snare and Hermione can't quite get her wits about her. It's really quite funny. Hold on, let's see if I can find it. That'd be brilliant. Um, but it's one of those things that just always stuck with me when, oh, I'm just trying to see if I can find it. Um, right, so she's trying to remember uh, how to kill the devil snare. Uh, and she's like, Ron's being really sarcastic and she's kind of freaking out because she can remember, but she can't quite figure out what to do. Um, devil snare, devil snare. What did Professor Sprout say? It likes the dark and the damp. So light a fire, Harry choked. Yes, of course, but there's no wood, Hermione cried, wringing her hands. Have you gone mad, Ron bellowed? Are you a witch or not? Oh, right, said Hermione, and she whipped out her wand, waved it, muttered something, and sent a jet of the same bluebell flame she used on Snape at the plant. I don't know why, but that just, um, that moment where she's like, she's, she just kind of loses, loses it, and just that whole interaction I've always really, really loved. I mean, the films are very different from the books, and to be honest with you, I think I'll always prefer the books because there's so much more to the story. Um, I enjoy the films, I enjoyed them at the time, but I don't re-watch them the same way I reread the books. But, if I had to pick, like, favourite moments from the films, the first time you see Hogwarts in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Philosopher's Stone, Sorcerer's Stone, where am I right now? Um, <laughs> The first time you see Hogwarts, I think that was a really breathtaking moment. I remember like waiting with anticipation uh, that that was gonna happen. Most of the third movie, really, really enjoyed. When Hermione comes down the stairs before the Yule Ball, I think that was a really nice moment. And I was like, oh, she had her, her duckling into swan moment. Um, I'm trying to think of other films. In the sixth film, when Harry takes the um, lucky potion and then he has this really great bit of banter with uh, Professor Slughorn when they're at Aragog's funeral and he does that thing with his fingers about the pincers. I don't know why I found that so funny but yeah I don't know that I can necessarily like pinpoint one specific moment from all seven films because I think they each had moments but again like I said I am probably a books over films kind of gal um, but all of the films, definitely. I've watched them all, I've watched them all a few times. Um, they're definitely some shining A-plus moments there. Piccadilly Circus, arguably one of the busiest spots in London. It's also the spot where Harry, Ron, and Hermione apparate to after escaping Bill and Fleur's wedding at the borough. In the books, they operate to Tottenham Court Road, which isn't actually that far away. We even managed to spot the number 19 bus, which the gang had to leap aside for in the films. And then it was over to Great Windmill Street, which the Golden Trio walked down after their close call with Death Eaters in the cafe. And they never even got their cappuccinos. I mean, that's kind of the thing about Harry Potter is there was a lot of characters who died and it was kind of, they were all kind of poignant in their own way. Like they happened for a reason and you kind of understood. The one I was most devastated by though was when Dobby died. I remember reading it and sort of not really accepting it and then crying. I cried, I cried when Dobby died. Like I will admit that. Um, in the book and in the film, every single time I reread the books, whenever I get to that bit, it always really, really moves me. Um, because he just, he was such a good character. He just wanted, he had such a good heart and just, he just wanted the best for everyone. And, and um, I think what he represents to Harry, uh, to kind of see that taken from him, was 
was really quite upsetting in, in a similar way like when Hedwig dies, the way in which she dies because he's Hedwig is sort of the last remnants of um, of his childhood. He's like an adult now. Dobby's kind of a similar thing. Dobby, I think, meant something really special to me and so when he died I was heartbroken, definitely. After so much wandering, we decided to stop at the House of Minalima, a spot that should be on every Potter fan's list. Located in Soho, a stone's throw from where Harry Potter and the Cursed Child is currently playing, sits this little purple house, filled to the brim with art and designs from the films. The folks behind Minalima designed so much of the things we recognize from the films, textbooks, Daily Prophet, even down to the tiniest label on a potion bottle. It's all so fascinating and well worth a visit. About, about translating a book to film is there's so much stuff that kind of doesn't make it. Like, I really wish that Peeves had been in the films. Um, I think he initially was, but then they had to cut it because it just wasn't really working. But like his character and like the humor and sort of even the events that he's incited and directly been a cause of, um, that would have been so, so great to see. But I think the biggest thing probably was the, the Marauders. Um, is that how you say that word? I never know. Um, but the fact that they, it's like Harry's parents, his dad and Lupin and, and um, Sirius and Peter and sort of this whole other life that you learn so much more about in the books. And it just makes it so interesting because you see a bit more of the parallels um, between Harry and his dad and you kind of see him sort of learning about who his dad was and stuff. And I think a lot of that just lent a great deal of depth to Harry's character that, that gets lost a bit in the films. Um, people always comment that he looks like his father, but I think you don't really understand it until you sort of understand a bit more about who his father was when he was at school as well. So I think it definitely, I would have loved to have seen more stuff with the Marauders. Once we finished up at Min and Lima, we headed down Charing Cross Road to see if we could spot the Leaky Cauldron. The books place the secret entrance to Diagon Alley somewhere along here. We wandered through Godwin's Court, the rumoured inspiration behind Nocturnally, and then we headed, diagonally, over to Cecil Court, which looks like it should be selling wands and potion ingredients, doesn't it? I wouldn't say that there was one character that I related to more than any others. I think I related to sort of certain bits in different different characters. I think Harry, you know, he's when he's with the Dursleys and stuff, he feels like a bit of a misfit. I think he always kind of feels like a bit of a misfit. Um, and I kind of always felt like that. I think that's what appealed to me about it was kind of he wasn't he wasn't like the super popular kid. Um, he got a lot of flack off of people. Um, I really, I related to Ginny. I thought she was really sassy and wonderful and I like tried to emulate that a bit. I like to think that I'm sassy and wonderful as well. Um, <laughs> um, I like Luna, how she just was totally weird and totally embraced it and she didn't care what people thought about her and I loved that and I 
I don't know if I've related to that because I definitely, I didn't embrace all my weirdness and I cared a lot what people thought of me. Um, but I, I kind of wanted to, I looked up to that, I guess. Um, I wanted to kind of be that person. And there's so many different characters that I loved. Um, it's difficult to pick like one favorite or one person that I related to the most just because they were all, I guess I could see a bit of myself in everyone. Um, every character, even like, even Draco, even sort of the characters you're supposed to hate, you sort of sense a bit like, there's little things that make them human. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sticking with that answer. <laughs> That's not really an answer, but you know. Since we were so close, we headed down towards Whitehall to visit the filming locations for the Ministry of Magic. Great Scotland Yard featured in both the fifth and seventh films, while Horse Guards Avenue only made an appearance in the Deathly Hallows, as Harry, Ron, and Hermione attempted to infiltrate the Ministry and steal back the locket. My least favorite character, I'm sure is no surprise to anyone. Um, I have never hated a character as much as I have hated Dolores Umbridge. Literally wanted to punch her in the face, duct tape her mouth shut, like just, oh, she infuriated me. She made my blood boil. The way that she would talk to Harry, the way she would talk to all the characters, be really condescending and horrible and, and discriminatory and like, just she was like the worst qualities in, in, in people all in one character and just everything about it. Oh God, I just hated her so much. So, so much, I still hate her. Literally, I read every time I read The Order of the Phoenix, I just get so angry, so angry, because she's horrible. She's, yeah. My favorite book and my favorite film are actually the same one. Um, my favorite book, Prisoner of Azkaban. Favorite film, Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, I, t I guess it's because, so this is kind of the first time that the outside world really like has an effect on Harry. Um, and I think in the first two books, he's very passive and he kind of like, as things happen, he's kind of like, oh yeah, let's do something about this. But I think with, with Prisoner of Azkaban, it's kind of the first time you see him really just step up and, and sort of start to come into his own. And um, I don't know, I really liked that. And it's, it's um, and the way that they did the film as well, because this was Alfonso Cuaron, who I think is so creative, and I've loved a lot of his other films as well, um, really just took it, it made it really, really magical. Um, and just a lot of the little, like the little like interludes that seemed a bit silly, but actually added a whole level of kind of magic to it. It was just, I really, really enjoyed that film. We popped into Borough Market and spied the entrance to the Leaky Cauldron on Stony Street that was featured in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, before hopping on a bus across the river to our final destination, Leadenhall Market, perhaps my favorite Harry Potter location. In the first film, this is where Hagrid takes Harry to introduce him to the Wizarding World. You can even spot the Leaky Cauldron as you head down Bull's Head Passage. Isn't it gorgeous? Phil actually asked me this question the other day. Um, I read the first book when I was 11. I was the same age as Harry. I'm 29 now. So you'd think, 18 years, why after 18 years am I still reading these books? And I do mean still reading. I've reread them so many times. Um, since moving to the UK, I think I've reread them about three times, like my versions. When I went home for Thanksgiving, I brought my versions back with me because I wanted to reread them. Um, I just, they got me through a really tough time you know, when, when you're that age and you're kind of trying to find yourself and I didn't really have a place where I fit in and so I read a lot of books and I felt like Harry, Ron and Hermione were better friends to me 
than some of the people that I was in school with. You know, they weren't perfect, they all had issues. They weren't like at the height of popularity. In fact, they were ostracized quite a bit. Um, and I guess I, like, I related to that. Just the, the connection I felt with these characters was always so strong that it just never, I mean, yes, I know I'm not a child anymore, but I just, I, I love these characters. Um, and I guess when I reread them now, it's more for like that nostalgic, kind of sense of belonging, but there's still something really reassuring about them. Like I love rereading them because it feels, it just, it just feels the same way. It feels the way it did when I was reading them for the first time. Um, really exciting. And even though I know what's going to happen, I'm still like, oh, I remember when this happened and, um, you know, I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Obviously, even though I know, but it still kind of has that sort of magic and that, that captivating quality to it that I, to be honest, I don't think I'll ever stop rereading them. I'd have a crap day at school and just feel really alone and I'd come home and I'd pick up one of my Harry Potter books and it was all okay. Um, it addressed things that I think a lot of books for people my age at that time weren't really talking about. I mean, the Dementors and depression and sort of death and bullying and all of these elements that are very real parts of life that I think you know, we were we were we were suffering at the time and didn't didn't have a way to express. So to kind of have these these guys here with us um, just made it feel like I found a place where I belonged. I cherish them. Um, I've read them so many times. I just they mean so much to me, and I don't know that I can really articulate how much. But in the last 18 years, like they've been a constant friend. That sounds really silly because they're books, they're not real people, but they have, they've been constant friends. Harry, Ron and Hermione, Ginny, um, all of them.